Hey, what's up? How you doing today? Nerd Boy here is going to show you an antique welder. Ooh. So check it out. This is my ancient Forney stick welder. Raggedy as all get out. It used to say Forney right up here up across the top. A lot has rubbed off. Um, I got it from Stubblefield Brothers Garage up in Nashville, Tennessee. Or Tennessee, if you prefer. And, um... Uh, it's a, you know, just an old stick welder, and uh, it's interesting to hear, learn a little bit about the company, Forney. Uh, they've been around for a long time. Started in 1932. I don't believe this one's that, quite that old, even though it looks like it is. And maybe from the 50s, I don't know, I have to ask Jack, Papa Jack, if he remembers. But I bought it from him at Stovefield Brothers Garage up in Nashville years ago and I've used it several times it still works great even though it looks like a turd and it looks like it wouldn't work uh, it is a 240 volt I'll show you these uh, plugs this is the one I had to swap onto it I had to change it out it's uh, got the two flat blades in the ground this one says it's a 30 or 50 amp um, this is the plug I also had to buy for it with the two flats, flat blades in the ground. This is the one that came on it. Um, one fat blade and one small blade. This says it's a 50 amp as well. But our breaker was just a 30 amp. Um, my uh, new to me, the Century Welder had a different cord on it. It had kind of like, well I guess it may be identical about to the one that was on the Forney. It's got the fat fat and skinny and uh, I was using that to test the, in the clips I, where I was showing the uh, what the 5 horsepower 240 volt motor but uh, sorry I digress uh, if you're wondering why I've got masking tape on those plug ins it's because the, the dirt or the mud daubers like to mud those things up with their dookie and uh, one thing that's kind of cool about these is they put a battery charger built into the bottom. You can see it's got uh, slow, medium, and fast, and then the bottom's the ground. You plug the ground in. So you just use your welding cables for, for to charge your battery, which is kind of cool. Um, I may make a separate clip showing some stuff that's in the uh, owner's manual because it's so ancient and historical. This welder belongs in a museum. But anyway, um, it's kind of cool they were smart I'll take the can lid off this thing which they was made out of aluminum which was pretty smart you can tell no rust corrosion up in that or minimal and the front half of this sucker the she is sheet aluminum the back half is steel I got that magnet on there but you can kind of see how nasty it is up in here but the thing still works fine you can see bear with me get a shot of some of this how nasty some of the dust is now you can't quite tell what there's I need some better lighting and a cameraman and a better camera and a woman but anyway yeah but it still works. It looks like crap, but it still works great. So, uh, what else is gonna say? I guess that's about it. Yeah. Big fat switch still works fine. It just hums very quietly, which is more quiet than my newer one with the noisy fan in it. But uh, anyway, one other thing that's kind of cool about it is uh, there's two coils in there and a bunch of leads and taps obviously but there's right down in there if you can see is a capacitor so I guess I'm assuming that still works but we know what assume stands for um, th there's some other models that have more bells and whistles like maybe a timer up on here for the battery charger but anyway I think that's about it for this antique so Hope you found it interesting. Take care.